folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So recently I put up some sparring videos where spears were featured. And uh, I, I won't tie you all with the same brush, but a number of you, uh, so about ten of you, made comment about the force with which we were thrusting each other with the spears. Well, first thing I should say is that um, looks can be deceptive. And I assure you that with our rubber-ended uh, wooden spears, in fact, we very regularly um, give each other bruises and uh, occasionally outright stun each other. The spears are incredibly powerful um, and in actual fact we are quite often hitting each other quite hard. Um, but the other thing to mention is if you see you can hit someone and you hit them and it's a sparring, it's a friendly sparring training environment, why hit them harder than you need to? Okay, For training purposes, if I can go poke rather than going BAM into someone, and it achieves the same goal, then maybe we should be nice to our friends and not try and take their heads off with our spears. Um, and we know that we can do it. It's very easy to switch from a light thrust to a strong thrust. So actually it's, a, it's showing a degree of personal control as well. But in a way, more important, uh, I don't know if it's more important, but anyway, to me it seems more important than these aforementioned factors, is that you don't want to hit really, really hard with a spear because it's gonna get stuck. Okay, now, spears are very pointy, long, straight objects. They also have a fair amount of mass to them. They tend to be heavier than swords, um, and therefore they have, you know, let's, let's say three pounds, four pounds, uh, sometimes heavier than that, of weight, traveling in a straight line, bam, quite quickly, straight into the target. Okay, and there's no way thrusting uh, at the same kind of speed, bam, that I would do in sparring, and I'm thrusting at you on the camera, so I might be defending myself, dum dum dum, smack, bam, okay? So the point is darting in, and trust me, it looks a lot quicker when you're on the receiving end than it does when you're looking at it <coughs> from above or from the side, okay? So they move very quickly, and man, do they penetrate. <laughs> I know you're gonna get ridiculous comments and jokes underneath this video now, but they penetrate like you wouldn't believe, okay? Now, um, I, some time ago I did, uh, it wasn't an official video, so I was kind of um, reluctant to, to make a big thing of it, but I did a thing where I was throwing spears into a log, and I tell you, <laughs> extracting the spears out of that log was insanely difficult sometimes. It took me, um, in a couple of cases, it took me a few minutes of wiggling and uh, kicking on the log and all sorts of things to get my spear back out again. That is thrown, and when we throw things we do tend to put everything into them, as uh, Thrand has shown with some recent um, weapon tests against uh, car bodies and uh, car bonnet lids and um, various other things. But the point is if you take a lump of meat, be it a pig carcass or um, uh, a leg of lamb or whatever, and you get a sharp spear, you'll find that just doing that makes a deep hole in the meat really, really easily. Okay, and you can, if you like, do this. I know not all of you will have a sharp spear lying around and a large piece of meat, but you can just get a roast chicken, for example, um, uh, a chicken that's not frozen, obviously, because frozen meat is not soft. Um, but if you get a, a chicken and uh, take a kitchen knife and just fairly casually stab it and then see how deep, you can see the grease mark on the blade, see how deep it went. We do not need to stab people very deeply in order to kill them or incapacitate them. Really, ideally, we don't want more than about six inches of blade. I mean, let's face it, most people, unless they're um, kind of overweight, are probably not more than, what, 10 inches deep anyway, okay? So you're gonna be well into internal organs if you go eight inches in, and I know some people have said even less, have said four inches with knives. Uh, and certainly four inches can be fatal, three inches can be fatal, well let's face it, cutting an artery can be fatal, but generally speaking with stab wounds, a few inches, let's say up to six inches, is all you need. And you may say, well why not thrust harder? Why not penetrate even further? Well, because your spear will get stuck and it will take you longer to get it out again. Remember that when you're fighting, if you thrust someone, they might drop down dead, okay? Or you might stab someone, and they'll carry on fighting for a bit and then drop down dead, or you might stab someone and they'll get really angry and they won't be fatally injured and they'll charge in and try and take your head off, okay? You don't, you never know what a single stab, wherever it goes, even if it's in the head or the face or the chest, you never know what a single um, weapon injury is gonna do, what effect it's gonna have on the opponent. 
um, and you do not want to be burying your spear in the opponent and then someone else attacks you or even that person on the other end um, uh, flings themselves at you or throws their weapon at your face or whatever. You don't want to be in a situation where your weapon is joined with the person's body, whether they're alive or dead. Okay? Even if, they're, if you kill them and then they fall down on the ground and you're there trying to get your spear back out of their body. Okay? So over penetration is a real problem with spears and in fact it's mentioned in treatises and, and various other um, texts, historical texts, talking about lances, bayonets uh, and various other types of pole weapon um, where it's absolutely critical that you don't over penetrate with a pole weapon because it will get stuck and you won't get it out again and this happened in World War One, and people had to detach their bayonets from their rifles because they couldn't get the bayonets back out so over penetration always been a problem and that's why I'm holding this spear boar spears and winged spears that's probably primarily what they're here for um, it, I've done a previous video about winged spears where I questioned whether that was the main purpose of these wings but certainly on a boar spear we know on a boar spear those lugs which are usually further up on a boar spear are there to prevent over penetration of the target you don't want to do that so there we go guys when you're watching videos of us sparring with spears we're deliberately not thrusting as hard as we can for a number of reasons um, including modern safety and the, the fact that we don't need to thrust hard because we know we could if we wanted to or needed to but also historically you wouldn't want to thrust really hard because it's not martially useful it doesn't kill a person anymore and it runs the risk of getting your weapon stuck cheers guys click subscribe now and also follow us on facebook